It's time for Good Game Spawn Point, and that means video games. I'm Rad. I'm Will. And I'm Jem. Coming up on today's show, we honk our way through mischief in a review of Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> Plus, we'll round up three of our picks from the new Apple Arcade. There's something quite satisfying about playing a game with a good swipe. Oh, that was weird. What was this? Floating upstream from Melbourne developers House House, Untitled Goose Game started as a bit of a joke amongst the team, but thankfully grew into something much more. Sliding into the waddling protagonist's web shoes, you're given a to-do list of naughty shenanigans. Using your beak to peck and pick up items, dashing away from the village locals, wings outstretched, and blasting your honker whenever you get the chance. Which is all you'll really need to do to send this village into a state of sheer panic. Your to-do list boasts so many wonderfully devious puzzles. The sleepy English village carves out five unique areas, each area flooded with tasks that tease you to torment, ranging from simply getting into a garden to making someone prune a prize rose. Solutions can be a bit tricky at times, requiring a little bit of extra logic to tick off your mischievous tasks. But no matter how flustered you may feel, the chaotic results are always worth the bit of extra work. Every puzzle has you being a little bit naughty, but so, so charming. And seeing as geese are notorious for stealthy behaviour... What, what, they're not? Well, anyway, you'll need to sneak about so you can watch the villagers' behaviour, keeping tabs on the best time to strike. All the while staying out of sight by keeping to the shadows and behind cover. Or in this case, bushes and minorly small objects. And the best part, if you're just a troublesome goose at heart, you could accidentally complete tasks without ever looking at the to-do list. The world is alive and just fun to poke around. So once you've observed your environment and started hassling the locals, everything just falls into place. It's fun to watch the sinister sandbox unfurl. Oh, I took particular delight in watching two neighbours just go about their day. They had so many things to steal, so I thought, if I steal this lady's socks and give them to a neighbour and then he throws them carelessly, what if I were to give him something breakable? And how would his neighbour react? Hi! <laughs> It's both alarming and kind of wonderful how often I found myself invested in the lives of these locals. The game developers, House House, really found the perfect art style for this realistic yet quirky world. Everything is pared back and simplified. Villagers move slowly and calmly, only to be awoken by our goose with larger-than-life wild reactions. And you're practically given full creative control over the goose, allowing you to bring him to life as you wish. Finding that perfect moment to honk, duck your head down in shame, or puff out your chest to assert your dominance. Cute dominance, however, for our small inquisitive bird. He does his best. However, I did find the camera often didn't quite cooperate. You're able to zoom in and out with the shoulder buttons, but with the rather tight perspective, I was almost always holding to stay zoomed out. When a game's reliant on watching movement patterns, it's rather annoying when they're obscured. I need to see what that old guy is doing. Which slipper is off the ground? but something unquestionably brilliant is its music. Oh, wasn't it a delight? It's actually a bunch of reworked passages from classical composer Claude Debussy, playing in tandem with the goose's constantly changing pace. It'll softly creep in as you sneak up behind your next victim, then dynamically shift into loud, playful chaos as you unsurprisingly get caught by the omnipresent gardener. Yeah, the play school-like piano paired with our waddling goose never ceased to make me smile. Sadly, though, our time with the sly goose is rather short. The main story only took me about two hours to complete. There are a few additional missions to check off once the credits roll, though, trekking you back across the map to further bring adorable terror to the townsfolk. But that was only about an extra hour of playtime as well. I would have happily flapped my feathered wings into the next village over. Maybe there's another kid with poorly tied laces. Hey, this guy's just bad at walking. I'd say sorry, but I'm a goose. Look, I'd gladly play more as well, but I do think that Untitled Goose Game is just the perfect amount of everything. 
making the most of its genius goosey puzzles whilst never overstaying its welcome. With a warm art style, tight controls and playful music, it's all just so lovely. I'm giving it five out of five rubber chickens. This is probably one of the first games in a long time I've wanted to show everyone I know, gamer and non-gamer alike. Whilst it is a little bit short, it is such a wholesome, bright spark of a game. I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. We should have gone with rubber geese. <laughs> Good morning, Australia! It's time for the scoop with me, Darren! Joining me this week, where there's a will, there's a way, please welcome Will! Oh, thanks, Darren. Hi, everyone. <sighs> now let's get down to quizness. It's time for Darren's Challenge! <laughs> Which game? shown here. Mm, I know those pixels anywhere, Darren. A hint that it may not be the most obvious of answers. Oh, now, now, don't give it away. <laughs> Answer at the end of the scoop. Now for the news. Sony has finally confirmed that the PlayStation 5 will indeed be releasing in late 2020. Whoa. The new console will include a solid state drive, plus a whole new controller with haptic technology to replace the usual rumble feature and adaptive trigger buttons for more variation in resistance. Oh wow, late 2020, that's only a year away and the same time as the new Xbox console should launch as well. Can't wait to see what's in store for this next generation. Affirmative. Moving on, and a recent Super Mario Maker 2 update has added the option to play with friends. Finally. Previously, multiplayer was randomly matched, but players can now match with their Switch friends for online co-op and versus multiplayer. The update also added things like a list of official makers so you can clearly see levels made by the Nintendo pros. Ah, yes, I'd love to tackle some Mario Maker levels with a little help from my friends. Maybe we should play together sometime, Darren. I'd love to, Will. Uh, would you like to play too, Boatmeal? <laughs> Oh, he's keen as well. <laughs> in other news, Sonic the Hedgehog will be used as a mascot for a device in an upcoming space expedition. It's all part of the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, plan to learn more about Jupiter's moons. Uh, who better to assist with some space exploration? Except maybe a Kerbal? Or me. <laughs> now for the extra school! <laughs> What do you have this week, Will? Well, Darren, I went along to Oz Comic Con in Sydney a few weeks back and I thought I'd share a photo of a spawnling and a fan of the show called Harry. And here's one of Harry showing off his GGSP pin. Shout out to you, Harry. How special to spot a GGSP host in the wild. <laughs> and now it's time for the answer to Darren's challenge. The game shown here is not Portal 2, but the Portal 2 level in LEGO Dimensions. Nah, that was a tricky one, Daz. Ah, uh, gotta keep our GGS peeps on their toes. <laughs> now that's all the time we have for this week. Until next time, good night, Australia. <sighs> oh, it's been ages since I've hit the convention scene. Oh, maybe you and Jen can help me come up with some cosplay ideas. I mean, obviously I'd make a great R2-D2 or a Dalek. A uh... uh, toaster, perhaps? Um, eight slice, maybe. Apple has just released their new game subscription service, Apple Arcade. A curated list of games that can be played across iOS, Mac and Apple TV if you pay a monthly fee. It brings with it a whole stack of brand new games, so we thought we'd check a few out. It's almost hard to know where to start, but as soon as I saw Projection First Light, I was instantly intrigued. This shadow puppet styled platformer has a twist. Instead of just jumping through a level, you use an orb of light to cast shadows. These dark areas create silhouetted platforms on a 2D plane, allowing you to find creative ways to get from A to B. Plus, it adds a cool twist to that classic platforming formula by adding in those fun puzzling elements. I really like this idea. You play as a young girl who seems to accidentally cause trouble wherever she goes. After getting sent to her room for her antics, she follows the ball of light on an adventure across different worlds. The game is visually stunning. I just love that shadow puppet aesthetic. It also draws inspiration from cultures that historically use shadow play as a form of entertainment, which I thought was pretty cool to see. I particularly love the intricate design of the Indonesian puppets. Unfortunately, the game lacks a little bit of polish. It's all too easy to get stuck in shadows and shadow placement often feels fiddly. 
If things are feeling finicky, you can play with a normal console controller over Bluetooth. Yeah, we found it really easy to set up and it worked well. I definitely recommend playing Projection First Light with the controller if you can, because it really helps you to control the orb and your character together a little more precisely. But even if you don't, the game's rich atmosphere should keep you invested. New challenges are drip-fed in to keep things interesting, allowing you to build on the knowledge and skills you've already developed. I just thought the story was told a little too abstractly. The shadow concept is so cool to me though, and even better, it was made by an Aussie studio. So I'm giving Projection First Light three and a half out of five rubber chickens. What'd you play, Will? Well, ever since I was a young boy, I played the silver ball, so I was drawn to one called the Pinball Wizard. You play as a round little wizard who is trying to get to the top of the tower and restore power to a peacekeeping eye. To do this, you'll need to defeat a series of levels using yourself as a human pinball. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. That's the price of world peace, Gem. Mm, indeed. The levels are quite small and simple, with a variety of different monsters to bounce into and defeat. Eventually, one of these monsters will drop a key that unlocks the door to the next level. Pick it up and a countdown starts to automatically advance you forward. This adds a bit of strategy because you can opt to either aim for the door and keep climbing or stick around and try to gather some XP points and treasure. The witchy ball feels like it moves differently to a traditional pinball, frequently opting to run back towards the bottom of the screen. It doesn't exactly feel like the ball is heavy, more that it has a mind of its own. It does take a little to get used to, but it was refreshing to have a different version of pinball. The other way they've switched things up is by making this an RPG. After each run, the XP and treasure you've collected is added up, allowing you to level up to become stronger and progress further. There's also special abilities you can unlock and upgrade. For example, you can gain health from defeating enemies, or shoot an orb of light that bounces around like a second ball. This was really handy for dealing damage or collecting resources from barrels scattered across the level, but my favourite has to be the dash. This catapults you forward, dealing extra damage, and allows you to change the direction you're travelling. Not only did it make the game more fun because it gave me more control, but it also got me out of some tricky situations as well. Timing it well enough to bring yourself back from certain doom feels very, very satisfying. We've seen a few of these pinball with a twist games recently, and I think it's a fun revival of a classic genre. I had a bunch of fun with this, so I'm giving the Pinball Wizard four out of five rubber chickens. What about you, Rat? Oh, well, while you were busy crashing into things as a pinball sorcerer, I was busy fixing things in the thoughtful puzzle game Assemble with Care. You play as an antiques restorer named Maria, who comes to a small sun-soaked town named Bellariva. Here, she meets all sorts of characters who have broken things that need fixing. You'll be commissioned with repairing all sorts of things, from a simple tape, to a cute music box, to a handheld gaming console. Whatever you're fixing, though, the gameplay remains the same. You basically pull everything apart, replace any broken components, and then put it all back together. I can't afford to replace it. It's quite straightforward with things snapping into place rather easily, but you will still need to use a bit of brain power from time to time. For the most part, it's a really lovely, gentle experience of clear and logical problem solving, combined with a healthy dose of trial and error. It's extremely satisfying to tinker with and repair these items. I could have fixed a hundred more things. I haven't had so much fun in ages. I wanted to give her something before she starts to forget. As you repair these often sentimental objects, you talk with the people who own them and gain some insight into their significance. I really liked this story. It was clearly and simply told, but it had a lot of heart to it. You see, as Maria's rebuilding these items, she's also inadvertently rebuilding relationships between people. Oh, I get a little sappy there, Rad. That's not like you. It was nice. <laughs> I think that sometimes narratives often go along the lines of saying, don't worry about worldly possessions, worry about people, which isn't a bad moral, but the game also recognises how sentimental and meaningful physical objects can be, and I really liked that. Plus, it made me want to go fix things in real life. I'm giving Assemble with Care four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Well, that was a look at some of the games we enjoyed on the Apple Arcade. Some are exclusive to the platform, but others, like Projection First Light, will be coming to other platforms too. I kind of want to go to an actual arcade now. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go, let's go to an arcade. All righty, Rattaroonie, let's jump right into the deep end of these gaming questions, shall we? Oh, hang on. We should be very careful before jumping into anything. You want to have safety first, always check the deck. Oh, no, it's just a, a metaphor. Even so, safety is a flotation device on this sea of metaphors. What does that mean? 
it means let's answer some questions. Starting with this video from Oscar. Hi, GGSP. I'm Oscar, and I'm a really big fan, and I've got two questions for you today. One, when will The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 come out, and what will be in it? Two, what do you think we will see in Hollow Knight Silk Song? Thanks, bye. Oh, thanks, Oscar. What a great video, and lovely to hear you're a big fan. In answer to your question about when Breath of the Wild 2 will come out, well, we're not exactly sure. I doubt the sequel will be ready for release this year, so at a minimum, I'd say we'd be waiting until 2020. It could even be something Nintendo waits to release on a new console sometime down the track. As for what's in it, well, all we really have to go on is the teaser from E3 time earlier this year, confirming that it was, in fact, in development. Aside from Zelda's very cool new haircut, I'd guess that pesky Ganon will be at it again. From the looks of it, stirring up some sinister stuff beneath Hyrule Castle. Of course, we should say that this game has not been officially classified yet. The first Breath of the Wild game was actually rated M, so that's something to be aware of. Be sure to check out the classification when it is available. As for what we'll see in Hollow Knight's Silk Song, well, from what's been announced so far, Silk Song will follow the journey of Hornet, who you might remember from the first game as an early boss. I'm sure we're in for more challenging foes and hopefully another fantastic soundtrack. Oh, I found it so tricky to beat Hornet in the first game. But this sure sounds like a cool new adventure from Team Cherry, who are actually from Adelaide right here in Oz. Oh, nice. Now let's have another video, shall we? And this one is from Elsa. Hey, TGSP, I've got a question for you. Are there any Zebra or Madagascar related games you could suggest for the Switch or laptop? Also, I have a noob accusation for Goose. When you were doing a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Live review, he said that a Galaga Beamer was a space invader. Noo! <laughs> Silly goose. Thanks, Elsa. We'll deal with that noob accusation in a moment. But first to some zebra or Madagascar-related games. Well, I'm pretty sure there were some zebras in some of the old Zoo Tycoon games. But the most accessible Zoo Tycoon game these days is probably the Ultimate Animal Collection. And I hear that it doesn't include zebras for some reason. But the developers of Zoo Tycoon do have a new game coming out later this year called Planet Zoo. And it looks like zebras are in that. Yeah, and I know there were a few Madagascar games on PC and console back in the early 2000s. And Madagascar Karts, a console racing game which is also from a while back. But I'm not sure if we'll see any on the Switch, unless they do some kind of port or remaster or something. Or if there's a new Madagascar movie, then we might see a video game crossover there. Hmm. As for your laptop, there appear to be some simple Madagascar-themed browser games on the DreamWorks website, like one called Penguin Skydive, though there's not a lot to it. Oh, and I know it's not a PC game, but there is a mobile game called Madagascar Math Ops, where Madagascar meets maths. Now to this noob accusation against Goose. I'm assuming that by live review, you mean our Super Smash Bros. live stream from last year. But I wonder, what's the statute of limitations on noob crimes? You know, like how long after the noobery was committed can we still be held responsible? Now we should probably check with Darren. He knows the law better than anyone. I mean, it sounds to me like Goose is in for a big old bowl of busted mustard custard, but let's see. Hello, Darren speaking. Oh, uh, hi, Darren. Uh, we have a legal question for you uh, pertaining to a noob accusation for Goose for a thing he might have said during one of our live streams last year. Yeah, what do you think? Can we cup him? You know, I'm always up for noobs getting a taste of noob cup justice. <laughs> but the noob court has in fact passed a special live stream exemption clause. Ah, oh, really? But why? Why would the noob court pass an exemption like that? Well, I suppose it's due to the nature of live streams being live. Uh, mere humans can find it difficult to recall accurate gaming information without technological assistance. What with their squishy brains and such. So it was decided that it wouldn't be fair to enforce noob cupping for live stream noobery. Of course, this is at the discretion of the honourable and stylish noob court judge. <laughs> it depends on the seriousness of the noobery committed. Well, I guess it's good to know that live streams are pretty much a noob cup free zone. So thanks, Darren. See ya. So long. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weight off my mind. Uh, Elsa, looks like we'll have to let that one go. Although, hang on, the noob judge is Darren, right? So it's at his discretion he gets final say? Oh dear. Well, we better just be careful, just in case. Oh, I think you're right. Mm. Now, I think we have time for one more quick quizzy, and this one is from Jack in Launceston, Tasmania. 
What is your favorite world in Super Mario Odyssey? Thanks, Jack. Hmm, favorite world in Super Mario Odyssey? For me, it'd have to be Metro Kingdom. I just love running around New Donk City. It almost feels like a real city. What about you, Red? Well, unsurprisingly, I like the Luncheon Kingdom most of all, because I love lunch. Speaking of which, it's just about lunchtime. All right, all right, let's wrap this up then. If you have a question for us at Ask SP, go here and send it in. And if you make it a video like Oscar and Elsa, you'll have a chance of scoring a GGSP hat, stickers and pin. Okay, lunchtime, let's go. Yeah, the big old snack town, yum time, population lunch. We've come to the end of another show, but the games just don't stop coming. Next week, we'll have a review of Trine 4 The Nightmare Prince. Plus, ukulele and the impossible lair. I feel like every game needs more cheeky, honking goose antics somehow. Yeah, right, the future is feathery. Well, a game that may not have sneaky birds, but does have hot. Molten Rocks. Okay, not the segue I was hoping for. Anyway, hop online to check out this week's exclusive review, the parkour-inspired Hot Lava. Until next time, be nice, have fun, and keep gaming. Rat out. Gem out. Will out. Darren out. Oh, did you know that geese can make quite good pets? They're almost as loyal as dogs. Oh, I've got an appointment at a pet shop. I'll stick with boat meal.